In this video, we're looking at rates and ratios, and the first thing we're focusing on is the ratios part. So we're looking at simplifying ratios. So when you're trying to simplify ratios, the first thing you look for is what we call the highest common factor or the biggest number that goes into both the 15 and the 36. So in our case, the biggest number that can equally go into 15 and 36 is three. So we need to divide both our terms by three. So we divide by three. So 15 divided by three and 36 divided by three. So our simplified ratio is gonna be five to 12. All right, and that's all you need to do. Now when you have three terms, like 120, 20, 80, you do the same thing. You try to find the highest common factor. To make things a little bit easier, because each of these has a zero, we can cross them out. So we're looking at 12, two and eight. And now we're going to find our highest common factor and the highest common factor in this case is two. So we're going to divide everything by two. So we get 12 divided by two is six, two divided by two is one, eight divided by two is four. And that is our simplified ratio. So again, find the highest common factor. You then divide every term by that number, by the highest common factor to get your simplified ratio. So now we're looking at a ratio problem. We have two people who invest in a business in the ratio of three to five. And if the larger investment is 520,000, find the amount of the smaller investment. So we're gonna use what we call the um, unitary method here. So to start with, I like to write down my ratio. So we know we've got three to five. We also know that the largest part of the investment was the 520,000. So that's our five number. So 520,000 goes over here. The next thing you want to find is you want to find what one is worth. So I know five parts, essentially what I'm saying is five parts is 520,000. I want to find what one part is worth. So to do that, we divide by five and we divide by five. So that gets us 104,000. So I know one part is worth 104,000. The problem is we need three parts. So I can go back over here and go times three, times three. So I get three parts is now going to be equal to 312,000. So over here, our three part now is 312,000. So we call that the unitary method. You find what one part is worth and then use that to find any unknowns you need. So again, you start with what you know. I knew five parts was 520,000. I divided everything by five to get one part, which is worth 104,000. I needed three parts, so I times everything by three. So here we have dividing a quantity in a given ratio. So Shahid and Bridie won 60,000 in a lottery. If they share the prize in the ratio of 23 to 27, how much does each person receive? So I know my total is 60,000. All right, and this is equal to our 23 parts that Shahid gets and the 27 parts that Bridie gets. So I know that the 60,000 is made up of 50 parts. So again, we're using the unitary method. I'm gonna divide everything by 50. Which gets me 1,200 equals one part. All right, so let's put parts up here just to make things a little clearer. So now that I know what 1,200 is worth one part, I can find what Shahid gets. So Shahid gets 23 times one, uh, sorry, 1,200. And Bridie gets 27 times 1,200. Because we're dealing with money, make sure you put the right units, dollar signs. So we're gonna look at rates now. So we're looking at simplifying rates to begin with. I want this in terms of dollars per kilogram. 
so that all I need to do there is this is essentially telling you what to do and it's telling us that we need to go all our dollars divided by the kilograms so we're gonna have 42 divided by 5 kilograms and that gets us eight dollars and forty cents per kilogram so we'll do that again over here this time we want it in meters per second so again what that is telling us is is our meters divided by our seconds so 200 meters divided by 26 seconds and that gets us 7.7 .7 if I round meters per second right uh, rate problems now so Grace's heart beats at 78 beats per minute how many times will it beat in one hour so we have 78 beats per minute we know that in one hour there is 60 minutes so we're just going to go 78 times 60 now I actually write this out a little bit different to normal 78 beats per min times 60 min now the reason I'm writing it like this is that crosses that out so they cancel and we get 78 times 60 which gets us 4680 and the only units that are left that haven't been cancelled was beats which is what we wanted so in one hour Grace's heart beats 4680 beats so for how long will it take to beat a thousand times so again let's write down our 78 beats per minute except this time we have a thousand beats so that actually is going to be a thousand beats divided by 78 so those would cross out and we get and to correct to the nearest second so this comes out as 12.82 minutes so that's 12 minutes and we have a little bit of left over this 0.82 minutes left over we know there's 60 seconds in a minute so we're going to times that by 60 so over here 12 minutes and 40 nine seconds.